All right, let's let call to order. Who <laughs> wants a Royal Village board meeting of Monday, May 18th, 2020? Open with a silent prayer of meditation. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, flag. The United of the United States, States, States of America. America. To the Republic, Republic for which, which it stands, 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 stands under God, 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 A roll call. Trustee Carroll. Here. Trustee Gaffino. Here. Trustee Lowry. Here. Oh, who else we got? Oh, uh, how come I don't get everybody up on my... Uh... Trustee Curtis is here. Trustee Curtis. Trustee Gately. Here. How <coughs> oh, we got Lowry. Uh, everybody's here. Martinez is here, too. What? Oh, Charles. <laughs> yes. Right there. All right. This is really fun. <laughs> Any audience comments? Trusty comments? Consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Trustee Curtis? Yes. That's a roll call, I'm sorry. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Martinez? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Gaffino? Yep. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Who have I missed? Trustee Carroll, yes. Carroll, okay. All right, that goes. New business under item number one, Mr. Hanna. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item number one is uh, the approval of the Messenger Library's appropriation ordinance that was approved at their Thursday night meeting that the village is also required to approve by statute. Motion, Motion approved. Second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none. Uh, Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Capino? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Carroll? Yes. Trustee Martinez? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Item two. Mr. Bosco. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, item two on the agenda tonight is an addendum for our fireworks contract. As you may recall, we discussed this two weeks ago. Um, the idea at the time was to bring back uh, possibly an addendum that would cancel our fireworks show and move it to uh, another date or move it till next year. In exchange, we would pay for half of the show that would be used as a deposit for the show so we wouldn't lose any money. Um, since then, the day after our board meeting, we had the Restore Illinois plan come out. And now they're saying that phase five, the governor is saying that phase five will be when we can have festivals and gatherings of 50 or more people. Uh, staff talked about if there was uh, the possibility that the fireworks actually were able to happen and we did have a, a treatment or a vaccine uh, that would open us up into phase five. Um, and, Excuse me. And um, but for that, would could we have it in a safe location? Um, after our conversation, there really wasn't a safe way that the staff felt we could open it and, and enforce social distancing and have the police in uh, close proximity to crowds. So at this time, what we're asking for is uh, an addendum that would cancel this year's show, move the show to next year, July third, twenty twenty one. It also gives us the ability, however, if the board would like to do a show later and it's safe to do so, 
we can reinstate the show with 60 days notice at any time between now and July 3rd of next year. Uh, as I said before, we pay half the contract now and the other half when the show is fired off July 3rd of next year. Essentially, this saves us 25,000 if we don't do a show this year at all. Motion to approve, Mark. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, Trustee Carroll. Yes. Trustee Curtis. Yes. Trustee Martinez. Yes. Trustee Gately. Yes. Trustee Gapino. Yes. Trustee Lowry. Yes. Trustee Jones. Oh. That passes. <laughs> Item three. Mr. Laskowski. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm getting a message on my computer that's saying my internet connection is unstable, so if at any time you can't hear me, please wave at me and I'll switch to my telephone and uh, use the, uh, the LTE network. Um, this item is the approval of a contract with RC Wegman for construction management and bids for the items of demolition, painting, electrical, structural steel, and roofing slash sheet metal for the silo restoration and illumination project in the total amount of $463,425. So if you recall from, from last meeting, we discussed the project budget that RC Wegman prepared as contract manager. When they prepared this budget, um, they went out and got um, quotes from a, a contractor to get individual prices on the bids. And that some the sum of those bids came back at um, for a total project cost of five hundred thirty nine thousand six hundred nineteen dollars. That price was recently revised up to five hundred forty eight thousand dollars due to an, uh, an error with the painting bid. However, that amount was still under the initial bid that we received of five hundred eighty eight thousand um, dollars from the very beginning of the process. So, based on the um, budget number that we received of, of that 539,000, the next step in the process um, the board asked us to advance to was to um, let, let the bids for each individual um, trait. So each of these categories would have its own bid held and that was kind of the methodology or, or the process by which we were gonna get better prices for the overall project. And uh, I'm pleased to report that um, R.C. Wegman was successful in doing so, and as you can see by the, the cost that we received, um, or the total project cost back. But what I'd, I'd like to do is just kind of explain a little bit about um, the bids and how we selected them and kind of the contract with R.C. Wegman, as well as kind of the funding mechanism for the project. So. Um, as you recall, staff's been working with R.C. Wegman, and they had initiated the process of, of getting um, revised prices for each of these traits. And, and I think to this point, they've done a successful job of reducing the cost of the overall project. They've been working pr professionally with staff, and, and they've got a lot of experience on, uh, in construction throughout the Fox, uh, Fox Valley area. They... They are a good contractor and should the board decide to move forward with, with this contract, the, the actual contract would be with RC Wegman, not any of the subcontractors or any of the, the individual bidders. Our contract would be with RC Wegman alone and they would be responsible for managing all of the subcontractors and coordinating their activities. So since we last talked, the, um, we did receive bids back in five categories. Those categories were demolition, structural steel, roofing and sheet metal, painting, and, and, and electrical. And I'm going to go through them briefly. There's not going to be a whole lot of surprises in this. In, in each case where we did receive bidders, um, it was both R.C. Wegman and staff's recommendation to go with the low bidder. There are two instances where we only received one bid, and there is a bit of a nuance with the electrical contract, but we're going to go through that um, so I can explain it to you. So the first contract that was let was for the demolition. We received a price from Alpine Demolition back at roughly $37,000. I have worked with um, 
Alpine Demolition in my previous place of employment, and R.C. Wegman has worked with them extensively. Um, both of us have had good working with relationships with them and completed successful projects with them. Their bid was slightly higher than um, what was estimated originally. It came in $11,000 higher, but we believe that was a, 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 a kind of a, a result of the clarification of scope and kind of explaining how access was going to be to the silo in order to demolish the, uh, the contract or the the interior of the silo. Um, so in this instance, um, I think both R.C. Wagman and staff are, are recommending to utilize that low, low and only bid of, of Alpine um, construction. For the structural steel, we, re uh, we received three bids. The low bid was $24,000 less than the original plan budget, and that was going to McKinney. And again, R.C. Wegman has worked with them in the past and has six, had successful results. So we'd be recommending going with a low bidder in that instance as well. Um, for roofing and sheet metal, this was another instance where we received only, only one bid. It was from Anthony Roofing. Um, they, the bid came in within $1,000 of the original um, estimate. And the bid was actually, the contractor offered us something um, that's kind of unique to a contract that you wouldn't necessarily see in a road program. So this contractor actually offered us an alternate that was unsolicited, but it was a, uh, something he noticed with the contract that he felt could reduce the overall cost of the project. So he changed um, the method or the material that he was going to use um, in one component of the, of the roofing and came up with a cost savings of $1,000. So. Um, the, the total bid then was only $1,000 higher than what was budgeted. The budgeted amount was $27,760, and the alternate bid um, from Anthony Roofing was $28,850, so very close. Um, the, the next contract was the, the painting contract, and this is where we really saved a lot of money. Um, the painting contract came in $57,000 less than what it was originally um, budgeted at. And the original budget was $104,000. Um, Osterbahn and Sons company came in at $47,300. And one of the reasons I think um, th this price came in so much better than we expected was one, because of the competition, but two, um, R.C. Wegman really specified exactly how the um, painters were going to be utilizing the lifts. Initially, each um, each contractor from each category was going wasn't clear on how they were going to be going up and down the outside of the silo and the rc wegman it was able to come up with a solution to say if the village were to rent all of the lifts that were needed for the project in this case two then the contractors could just use them as they needed them as opposed to each individual contractor having to rent his own lift which was a pretty good reduction in cost. And I think we saw that mostly here in the painting contract. The electrical contract was also competitive and it came in real close to what the budgeted amount was. Um, the estimated amount was uh, $157,534 and the, the total bid came in at 156,877. So just about Four or five hundred dollars less than um, the, the the budgeted amount. Now the the nuance here with the electrical contract stems from the the alternates that we have the choice of selecting from. So, at the conclusion of the last meeting, um, we had talked about the different options. We could either add uplighting to the silo or um, do without it. The, at that time, the consensus was to include that alternate in the bid and, and see what the prices would come back at. Um, in this case, if we were to choose the uplighting, the six, actually, if we choose the uplighting, it will determine, if we choose an alternate, it will determine which contractor is the low bidder. So if we choose the alternate to have the uplighting on the silo, the low bidder would be Volt Electric and the total contract price would be 
$156,877. And the added cost for that alternate would be about $9,500. If we chose not to do the uplighting, then the total cost of the project would be $147,000. So in this case, um, again, the uplighting was only $9,587. And that was the price that was included in this contract. So after, in summary, you know, looking at the bids, we did select the low bidder in each category. Um, there were some bidders in, in, in two categories. We did only have one bid, but we felt that those bids were competitive and in line with the RC Wegman original budget. Um, if, if we chose to go forward with the project, the project would be funded from the TIF district uh, or from TIF funding. So in that respect, um, the project wouldn't necessarily have any impacts on the general operating budget or, or the capital budget. So the next step in the process is really to kind of consider um, what, what the board's um, wishes would be. If the board wanted to move ahead with the project, um, the contract presented for consideration by the, would be with two, I, I'm sorry, the contract presented for consideration would be with R.C. Wegman, and it would include all the components necessary to complete the, the silo illumination and restoration, including the uplighting. The contracts for each of these five bids would be included in a contract that would be managed by R.C. Wegman, and, the, and they would supervise not only the subcontractors, but all the coordination of their efforts as well. The, the contract as presented would be in the total amount of $463,425, which would be roughly a cost savings of $124,375 from the original <laughs> bid. The, the only other alternative that I could offer is that if the village board chose to go ahead with the project, but did not necessarily want to use RC Wegman, they have this option. However, we have worked with RC Wegman. They've done a professional job up to now. They've reduced the cost of the project. And if we were to engage or initiate this other process, another process of looking for a construction manager, it's going to extend the process of, of the overall construction project by at least two months. And, and there's no guarantee we'd get a better cost on the project at that time either. So with that, I, I guess I, I'd look for, um, the board's direction on, a, on this contract. Mark Gailey here. I make a motion to approve the contract with RC Wegman. Second. Nice. I second that. Discussion? No, I, I would just like to say that I don't think right now is the time that we should be talking about spending almost $500,000 on, um, you know, an, an enhancement for the riverfront. I think we need to be cautious just to see what the economic impact of the whole COVID situation is going to be on the village. I understand this is coming out of TIF funds, um, but I just don't think with so many people suffering that this is something that we should be moving forward with at this time. So we're, talk, we're talking about uh, putting 500 and some thousand dollars into the, uh, mm -hmm. into the world of uh, business. It provides some work for a great number of people, so that should be our our effort in that case. We we can't use that we can't use that funding other than for improvements, right? Uh, Steve, can you clarify that? There, we can't use that for uh, anything but that. TIP funds can only be used in the geographical area of the TIP district. And they can be used for infrastructure projects and beautification projects and other enhancements to that geographic area. But I, would, I, I would rather not to interrupt Mark, but I would rather have those funds available for our small businesses that may need these funds in the, in the next coming months. Um, you know, I think it's a, I, I think it's a great project. I just don't think right now is the time. I think that we we're going to have a lot of small businesses suffering. We should be publicizing the availability of those funds to them and let them have the first shot at them. Yeah, but how would we distribute those funds to the people? Those funds can't be used to operate the business. prop up their business. They have to be used for beautification or some sort of facade program or some sort of infrastructure 
It's not like they can use it as a loan for payroll or anything. No, I understand that. But anything we can do to give these businesses a competitive edge, and a lot of that competitive edge can be, you know, pa packaging does make a difference. I'm just saying I don't think we should be spending $500,000 out of that district without first letting our businesses know that it's available. How is well, it available to them? How is it available to them? Well, if they need to do some facades, you know, some some construction projects or something to make their business more marketable. Um, well, we have more. We have more than five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, what would be left in there, Bill? What would be available if we when we draw that out, or if we draw it out? You're muted, Bill. Yeah, I know. I'm pulling it up right now. Um, probably roughly. about 1.2 million that would be left in it correct can that fund be used for the aid of businesses even though it may be um no facade? No. no it can't no it can't you know i think that if somebody could come up with a, a million dollars worth of improvements i think we would we certainly could do could do that but i i certainly don't see that happening we've got a request right now We'll just be discussing later for a third, well, whatever it is. But he wanted to spend more, but he decided not to spend more because he didn't want to spend not his money. His, you know, he, he was he knew he was going to get money from us. But I think that there's plenty of money there for other projects, and I think this is something we planned on, something we wanted to do, and uh, I certainly feel we should move ahead with it. I agree. Well, we need. Yeah, I agree. As much as I sympathize with Laura and you know her and the need to help some of the businesses, I just don't really know if it's even possible through that pond. Correct? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. All right, entertain a motion to approve. Thank you. Um, well, there's already been a motion. Okay, second it. It's called for the roll yeah. call. Moved and seconded. Uh, Roll call. Trustee uh, Gately. Yes. Trustee Lowry. Yes. Trustee Gaffino. Yes. Trustee Carroll. Yes. Trustee Curtis. No. That passes. Very good. Thank you. Trustee Martinez, right. yes. You, you missed Trustee Martinez. <laughs> oh, I missed Martinez? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Martinez? <laughs> I, I say yes. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I don't have a list here, and uh, I don't have all the faces in front of me, so no I deal. apologize. Uh, I have no business. I have nothing to say other than uh, I hope we're all staying safe. I think there's a, uh, everybody wants to move into something, a new uh, era. I think that the end of the month is gonna show us a, a great deal. It seems like things are leveling off. I really feel the governor is going to uh, to move. I know all the mayors in the uh, Metro West have uh, sent a letter to the governor saying that we'd like to have it changed from the, the way that he's got it in his, his groups to set it up differently. And I think that uh, I feel that he's going to take some interest in that. We'll see what happens this week in the, uh, for the legislature uh, meeting again. So that's my, uh, my comment. Any committee report? Trustee comments. Dale, did you uh, join in the mayor's? in requesting that uh, we be pulled out of the uh, Northeast Quadrant? Yes. What we asked for is it to be realigned with the, I think 14 districts they have for the EM, EMS or whatever. Yes. I feel that we need to have something different than what is set up for the entire state. 
I, uh, you know, I see, uh, I feel that there, uh, there are certainly a lot of people that want to go to restaurants. That's fine. I'm not going, but that's fine. And we have a lot of restaurants that have outdoor uh, places to eat. So I think it'd be, uh, it could be done as long as people use their heads. <laughs> that I think could be done, those kind of things. And I think even uh, the barbershops and other things. It depends on people have got to use their own. You know, a lot of people don't think it's serious. And uh, it is. So, but yes, I uh, I did say that we would uh, we approve that. I hope everybody feels that same way. Any other trusty comments? No, uh, well, uh, Mark Haley, did you, just a uh, a note on the um, grant program that the state proposed. From uh, Decchio, oh. I know contact with Steve. Yeah. There's twenty-five yeah, dollars on the table. I just want to say uh, that Steve is head staff working on that uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars grant that we certainly can use for some of our projects. Hopefully, maybe even the silo project. Well, I think there's been good discussion amongst staff, and, and I was in on uh, quite a bit of that to determine what qualifies and what doesn't qualify, and then getting uh, yeah. putting their action together. On, uh, on developing those uh, grant applications, uh, some that we're doing in-house, some we're doing out-house. So uh, I think we're on top of it. Uh, and yes. I think, you know, we, we know. certainly have a good chance of, of uh, getting things. Steve, you want to uh, go jump in or what? Yeah, I, real quickly, um, the plan is right now that we are working with our infrastructure engineers at EEI. They're putting a grant application together uh, for the realignment and readjustment of the airport road and Route 31 um, intersection. That was actually a project that we were looking to fund with TIF funds from the Route 31 TIF eventually, um, but we think it's a great project. We've already met with IDOT on it, so I think that that's a, a very good, high qualifying project. So we're going to submit that. And we're also working on a second grant uh, that we're putting together in house, and that is to replace all of the street lights, bases, and poles um, on Orchard Gateway and with LEDs. The last area really in town that we haven't upgraded the LEDs yet, it was slated for this year. That's another five to $600,000 project. Um, that one we're actually applying for the governor's fast track program because we think that that's something we can actually start within 90 days if we get, uh, if we get the funding. Um, and then we're taking one more look and we've let, we've vetted out a whole bunch of programs and uh, and programs and different grant projects that we possibly have, and we think there might be one more. We don't know if it's it's um, doable or qualifies, uh, but we have some preliminary engineering on some uh, stormwater improvements, and we're going to WBK Engineering just to see if they think it's a viable program to apply for. Hey, uh, Steve. Um have we looked into any uh, grant programs uh, that could support perhaps the um, ideas of Trustee Curtis? Yeah, so as of right now, that's one of the things that Metro West is doing, our Council of Government, is they've been monitoring all of the legislation for the funding that's supposed to come to municipalities. And a lot of us are waiting right now to see when that funding comes from the federal to the state level down to the local level how it's going to be administered and, and how to apply for those funds for local businesses. Uh, in the meantime, in the first round of the loans that were put out, um, I know we have some information on our website for small businesses to apply for those programs to the federal government right now. Okay. I just wanted to, you know, emphasize on the importance that the point that she made, you know, I, I know a lot of businesses are struggling and, I um, I would like to see if we can uh, do some research and uh, see if we can come across anything that could be of her aid. Because I, I do feel she, she's right about that. Mm -hmm. Well, the, I think uh, the majority yeah. of the businesses we have that are suffering are certainly the, the ones that uh, uh, give us, you know, personal things, uh, the hairdressers, the, the barbers, the uh, nail nail people and uh, certainly the, the restaurants 
that uh, that are not able to uh, to uh, work the way they're the way some of them are. But I think that uh, if we come up with a plan, we certainly will entertain it. Great. All right. Any, uh, uh, Mr. Bosco? Uh, yeah, actually, I just kind of um, kind of rolls right into my report. I was just going to update the board. Um, as, as you know, we're obviously an active member of Metro. And one of the things that I, I would say is uh, they've been doing a pretty good job of getting all of the villages to talk and, and go back and forth um, outside of our normal meetings. The administrators talk a lot. And it gives us opportunities to see what other towns are doing, methods they're using, um, things we're monitoring. And one of the things that went out today was Metro West did send a letter, uh, they were preparing to send it today to the governor's office, respectfully, as, as the mayor had mentioned, uh, to look at the Restore Illinois plan. And the truth is, is there isn't a lot of, um, it, there, the concern mostly from the groups that we're hearing is, is really just about the, the timing of the phases in the region. Um, not necessarily the stay at home order. So uh, that's currently in effect. So what we're, uh, what Metro West is looking to do is basically ask the governor to respectfully look at whether or not we can uh, move into a different region. And then the other one is the restaurants because in phase three of the Restore Illinois plan, uh, hair salons, uh, barber shops, and, and small retail stores can start opening up again. And by accounts, it looks like we're getting closer to phase three, according to uh, the Department of Health uh, website. And when we get into phase three, those places will open, but restaurants won't be able to have indoor eating until phase four and uh, indoor outdoor eating. So without limit, with limited capacity. So that's everyone's pushing to see if restaurants can get um, possibly moved into phase three with some safe methods put in place. And that's all I have. Very good. Any questions of uh, Steve? Mr. Attorney? I have no report. Thank you. Okay, department reports. Mr. Hanna, finance. Uh, nothing else tonight, Mr. Mayor. Community development, Mr. Toth? Uh, no report this time, Mayor. Uh, police, Chief Fisher? Uh, no report tonight, sir. Public work, Mr. Laskowski? Hey, Mayor, I just mentioned that uh, the we've had the record rain for the month of May set in 2018, and that was over 8.21 inches of rain. In 2019, we broke that record. And this month of May, we're on pace to break it again. So we're about three years in a row, we're going to be setting a record for the amount of rainfall in the past 150 years. So if you drive by Village Hall, you'll see the Fox River kind of running through Riverfront Park into the channel. And uh, it's probably pretty evident that it's very soggy out. So take a look at and check on your sump pumps from time to time. Make sure they're still running. <laughs> very good. Yeah, the, the park. Uh, the village park looks pretty bad. I, I have a question for Chief Fisher. Uh, Chief, yes. have, have you gotten a lot of calls on social distancing violations at all? Um, I wouldn't say a lot. We get them every now and then, and everything that we've responded to so far is is either unfounded, like um, I know we've gotten a few calls to residences, and they've only got four or five people there and, and they're clearly several feet apart. Or, um, you know, we've gotten the calls on some kids uh, in groups and, you know, everything is easily solved. They, they separate or go, go their um, separate ways or whatever, but not, not a lot of calls on it, no. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mayor? Anything else? Yes, uh, Mr. Oh, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Sorry. Mayor, yes. Uh, real quick, I just want to let you know, Lori Murray's been trying to contact me, so she's having trouble. She she was having trouble getting Zoom to work, so um, I'm getting her in touch with Dave Arndt right now, so she might be available for committee a whole in a minute or two. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We're adjourned. Hmm. <clears throat>